This is Inside Outlands. I am your host, Nat Ryle, and joining me today is streamer Boofed Your Mom, otherwise known as Chief Swirling Air. How's it going, man? It's going pretty good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, so I had an abnormal number of requests. Uh, I said that about Chill, but like you pale, he paled in comparison to people wanting me to get you on the show. Uh, that might have been because I kept asking for, for griefers, and I, I don't, we'll get into that, but... Uh, I kept getting DMs, you know, I get this guy on. So I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you agreed because I had lots of people not want to get on and talk about that subject. So thank you. Oh, I love it. Thanks for having me, man. But yeah, uh, I'm not surprised because from the streams, I usually get a lot of inflow of people just passing by. So it's a, it's a good way for people to get to know a little bit more about the play style, get to know about our guild, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into all of that for sure. Let's start. Let's start easier though. Uh, what, like, when did you get into UO? What, what brought you to Ultima Online? And like, how long ago was that? Oh man, like way, way back when, uh, back when I was a little kid. Because I'm, I'm 23, so like, I, I don't even remember when the game came out. I just remember playing it as like an eight year old, playing a little bit more in high school with just like family friends, and it just sort of branched off from there. Met some good people as we went. Yeah, twenty three. That's uh, that's pretty young to play a game this old. Hell, I think it might be twenty years old. How old is it? I think ninety seven. Yeah, it's over twenty years old, man. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a year after I was born. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You might have been, yeah, you're probably were shitting in diapers when this game came out. That's that's awesome though. Shit in the diapers and just sitting up at the the desktop, casting next <laughs> yeah. bolt. Yeah, uh, I think when my kids were that age, uh, I was playing Lord of the Rings online. So I, I have pictures of of me holding them and like between my legs as I played uh, an MMO. <laughs> I imagine, uh, I guess you're, if your dad played MMOs, maybe he was an Ultima. Oh, we were we were a big Diablo family. Uh, that was our thing. Yeah, uh, Diablo. It, that, that's definitely a thing. Uh, I got into I think two. I never did three. Don't do so, three. Never do. <laughs> don't do three. Yeah. So, so what brought you to Outlands? And what, uh, what about the shard attracted you to the uh, to the server? And like, what, what, how come you came over here? Well, I didn't. I had played IPY, IPY two. So a lot of basically T T T O A style. So I wasn't a big fan of like fast casting or anything like that. But actually, like our our little group, we like our our guild stuff. Like we're pretty close. And we used to play WoW together. Like, up your dad was Twink Rogue, Twink Undead Rogue. He's crazy. 29, running Warsong Gulch. And he DM'd us, uh, me, Milk, and Support Flam. And we all hopped in and grouped up for Outlands, got ready, packed our bags. Oh, yeah. So you you guys have been together before? So you just kind of brought the, the crew over? Yeah. Like uh, like I said, we, were, we would uh, play our Twinks in WoW. We're all running horde. I mean, you can see our little profile pictures. It was based off the race that we were playing. <laughs> so, when's the last time y'all were in uh, Ultima together, though? Um, we so so up your dad. I played with him for a little bit. Crap, I forget which shard because so long ago, so much has happened. Um, I think it was like I, at the end of IPY two, something like that. And then um, milk and support flam. I, I've just known them as family friends. So they sort of hopped the train with me. And milk, you mean uh, BXB milk? Is that he's the, it, the big thief on the shard, right? Yeah, he's uh he's our other sub streamer. Yeah, I'll have to get him on here at one point and and go over thieving. I don't think we've covered that yet, and uh, it's definitely something I'm, I'm interested in to hear his perspective of uh, how it is here in Outlands. You get a lot of people talk about how it's too nerfed, but then you see people like him steal just fine. So. I'd be curious to see uh, what that entails here. Uh, we do like we do a lot of like combat based builds. So there's a lot of thieves that that say that it's nerfed, but that's because they literally just go in and they just like they'll pop out of hiding and take something and run away. So they have got a really gimp build. But we we like to do the combat. So like we'll we'll run up, we'll fight, we'll steal steal anything that you need for combat, and then basically just nuke you down from there. You're a streamer, and uh, which is interesting because uh, especially the kind of gameplay you like to do, which is which is annoy the crap out of people. But 
uh, what what made you decide to, to stream Outlands, and have you had any any kind of unique challenges in in doing that? Because I mean, it's a full loot game, so typically in, in those kind of games, you don't want people to to know exactly what you're what you're up to, you know. Well, I just uh, I actually just like woke up one day and just decided to start streaming, and so then shortly after that, I was streaming League of Legends, and I went over to Outlands whenever it started, and pretty much since then, like. I've I've just loved it. Only the only really problem is like whenever you get those nasty stream snipers that will stream snipe you for hours. That's really the only issues I've ever run into. But with the griefing play style, I'd rather have people want to come and fight me. That's why I don't play a griefer that just goes runs around the corner and hides. I'd rather incite PvP to get more people involved in the scene. Yeah, so let's let's just get into it. You're uh I got, I know there's a lot of different kinds of griefers. You you seem to play the kind that you want to get them to attack you so you don't have to go red. So what are what are some of the ways you actually accomplish that? How do you how do you make people attack you? Oh boy. I, everyone knows me as soon as there's a tamer on the screen, I'm going right <laughs> up and I'm smacking that pet. As soon as you smack that pet, they start to get a little pissy. And then you go take their gold and then usually by that time they're they got enough anger to go start attacking you. Sometimes they'll send down some red. Sometimes they won't. Yeah, you, know, you know how it goes from there. You attack the pet that flags you gray. Uh, yeah, talk to me like I'm I'm a UO five year old. I guess so you attack the pet. You, it flags you gray, but not them, right? So they they have to attack you to go gray. Yeah, it used to be in the beginning of the shard. Um, they had it to where if you attack the pet. And if they would use the all guard command, they would go instantly gray. But then they end up patching that out. So yeah, I'm I'm technically gray at that point. So anybody in the area can attack me, and that's usually my goal, is to get as many people to attack me and flag so that I'm able to go and start taking them down. Like most of the time I'd fight like a a one V two to a one V four or five and try and get at least one or two people down. So essentially whenever I do go gray. Now you can use the all guard command and it doesn't flag you as a criminal, but you can put damage into them. So I'm not great. They're not great to me. So if I attack them after they use all guard, I'm still, I'm, I mean, they're still blue to me. It's until they use the kill command that they'll actually do an aggressive act and flag themselves. That That's the danger zone. Yeah. So your job was easier and now it's now it sounds a little harder. Uh, at least at least with tamers when did that change go in is it pretty recent uh that that change was probably within the first month so in the first month whenever i would grief it like my my build didn't even start off as a griefer build like i started off just pvming and then people would walk up and start taking my taking my monsters from me and i was like well screw it i'm about to go about to go mess with them mess with their farm and that's sort of how it just like tumbled down into the the grief play style of the parry dexer. Oh, so you're you're running a, a like a, a warrior dexer type. You're not. Do you have any majory? No, he's a seven x parry dexer with uh, macing. So nothing nothing too special. It's pretty pretty standard. It's pretty basic. And so with that build, you're able to take on uh, being outnumbered. Is it is something about that build better for being outnumbered than than the regular seven or five x mage build? Well, the thing about it is, is you have to consider the the parry gives you a second resist roll for mobs. So if I'm running around, I can absorb a spell and then parry a spell and take like six total damage from those two spells, if that, if it's even that high. And the nice thing about it too is it works on pets. So pet damage is decreased, and I and with arms lore, it makes me do uh, makes me proc on pets. So I can do like a one sixteen to 150 damage on a pet and reduce armor. Oh, okay. So you're, you're looking at this as almost purely of, of messing with tamers in. I mean, it's, it's good against anyone. Like one, I like, I have one V two uh, tank mages. I have one V one tank mages and most of the time I'll be able to get one down, but it's mostly, it's not even about the build. It's about how you play. Cause you got to play with mob aggro. So the, the thing that sucks is, is if you have all the aggro on you, and if you're missing that pairing, then you're not going to be able to get those deflux in. And you're not going to be able to reduce your damage. You'll take a lot more. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I have a, I had a worry that I had the P 
Perry and I dropped it a little bit to get tracking, but it's definitely fun. It's a, it's really nice, like a face tank type of build. Uh, and with magic resist, I could have taken him into PVP. I just, uh, never do. Uh, maybe one time I should try it. Not necessarily the kind of PVP you do, but I'd like to at least take him into factions or something. Yeah. I wouldn't, uh, I would never take my Perry Dexter into factions. Oh, it's yeah? just, you'll face a rail. Oh, okay. I I know nothing about PvP, so. Yeah, that's pretty much my forte. Just going straight for PvP. What are some other tactics to get people to attack you? What's some, uh, besides the messing with their pets, how else do you get them just really riled up? Uh, you, you just follow them around and just, just take their gold. Like, I would, I would literally just stand next to their mob, not even hit it, and just let them do all the work, and just snag the gold, snag the special loot. And then just stand there and wait. Yeah, and that that will flag you gray, right? Because you're you're taking yeah. a mob's goal that you didn't have anything to do with. So I'm I'm sure you get attacked all the time. Yeah, I would think so, especially if you're sitting there being that uh, annoying about it. Yeah, the the best part is is like whenever, well, whenever someone goes down to, I'll go I'll go take all their crap. So if they're with a the buddy, the buddy's gonna get pretty mad and he's gonna try and get his his friend's stuff back. So it makes it makes it pretty easy, especially among groups, since a lot of people think, okay, it's just one guy, it's no big deal, you could easily take him down, or something like that. So in those scenarios, that's that that's where I shine because taking like a a three damage alley hit, three damage something else hit, and then just off screening whatever dump they throw, you could just turn around and and use the fact that they're out of mana to your advantage. I ran into you one time in game. Just one time, uh, and we were in a big BB group, a uh, Beard Brothers group, like fifteen of us, and we just surrounded you and uh, body blocked you, and then and then chopped away. Oh yeah, I, I remember that because I was just like, okay, um, as long as I don't get blocked, maybe I could just stamp pot through everything. And when, <laughs> I was lagging really bad, so my stamp pots were oh, going it's, off it's very lag. slow. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna blame the lag. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> that, that was fun, though. Uh, you definitely had the balls to do it because there was a bunch of us there. So I think it was fun for us and, and cool for you. I think you probably were streaming, too. Yeah, I was streaming. I, I was laughing about it because, like, everybody was just like, don't do it, don't do it. And I'm just like, well, screw it. I'm going to try at least. And it was pretty <laughs> funny. It was funny on my end, too. Yeah, I mean, that's probably – that's one of the biggest differences between a, a, a pvp and – and if someone like me that only PVMs, it's you got you have a lot more balls. Hey, what's the worst gonna happen? You lose your gear? That's not big. It's not that big of a deal. And if you had one, you had a good story, been fun. Sometimes you just gotta risk it and then see what see where the chips fall. Yeah, I I do I do like pushing the boundaries a little bit because it's it's no big deal. Like you're gonna you're gonna get your weapons back. You're gonna get you're just gonna restock. It's it's UO. I mean, if you're used to that game where you drop all your loot. And sort of just forgive and forget and go back in, try and get it back, or or just go mess with someone else. Is there is there any other weird tricks that, that Yo has that gets you to to mess with people? Um any kind of weird spot in the map or any, any area of the game that's that's more like easy to get this done? Well, the in the beginning, like uh, Ossuary was very over farmed and so so we kind of came up with our own little title, the Guardians of Ossuary, go around guarding the Ossuarians, and it has a lot of pathing. So if you're not, if your pathing isn't that good, you're going to get trained on with mobs, and then at that point, you're you're going to be taking way too much aggro, and it's a much easier kill. But other dungeons, it's kind of it's kind of similar. It's based it's based around how well you know the map, and how well you can play it. Yeah, they changed the aggro range. I don't know, two months ago, maybe maybe more than that, but now everything has a pretty tight leash. But for a while there, you could get pretty decent trains going all the way across the dungeon. Yeah, that would definitely make it a little crazier. Uh, more, more. I, I'm sure you live in the chaos doing this kind of stuff. Oh, you best believe it. Because back in the day, before I started streaming UO, because I took a little break, then I came back and streamed, um, I would pull those executioners that they got in Ossuary all the way over to the Lich Magus room, and I would set them up to like kill the tamer pets, kill summoner pets, just to get them out of the way. And then the best part is, is whenever people go by and invis on them, 
you just walk up right next to them and get them to proc their special ability. And by that time, like that bleed damage and the initial hit, they're donezo. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So what has you doing this over, over just regular PVP maybe? Uh, the, the thing that, the thing that makes me do it over regular PVP, um, now, now I do a lot more just normal PVP, but like, griefing somebody who's accumulating a lot of loot, especially in the early game is going to get you a lot more money overall. And like I said, like that guy, my guy is a PVM build, but it works just as well in PVP. So getting those people to die increases the chance that I'm going to be able to get more special loot, more gold very quickly. Like it, it's kind of, it's kind of just like rolling dice though at the same time. Cause you never know what they're going to have. They could have absolutely nothing or they could have like a bunch of extracts and a skill scroll. Like you never know until they're dead. Yeah. You are rolling dice. Uh, also the more you do it on, on one character, the more well known you are for it. Uh, I mean, it just, it says for itself, I, I say that name and most people know who I'm talking about and what you do. So you see chief swirling our road through a roll through a dungeon that kind of know what to expect. Right. Uh, you, but you're always, there's always a sucker. There's always someone that doesn't know, I guess, uh, especially with the shard this large, uh, I mean, you have no notoriety, but there's, there's always people that don't know what's coming, I guess. Oh yeah. That, that, that happens all the time. Like, the the problem is now is that since like you said my notoriety is now becoming a becoming a little obstacle for me because whenever people see Chief Swirling Air it's like all right let's send down four reds or something like that but I'll always get that one person that doesn't know me or I'll see somebody who does know me and they'll be like oh this asshole yeah see a bitch and just hit the gate like they literally type that and it's funny because I catch it on stream all the time now. Yeah, I had someone, uh, I asked for questions and, and someone, I, f I forget who, I wish I'd written it down, but they said, ask him why uh, when, when we kill him, he brings four reds. So people are blaming you for escalating after they kill you. This sounds like typical PVP chatter though to me, I guess. Who escalates, who, who de-escalates, whatever. I mean, in, in that case, like you, you got to understand all right, you're you're sending down a bunch of people to kill one person. Uh, you, you have to expect retaliation. But how we play the game is we will send even numbers unless you are known for for making an uneven fight. So if we know, all right, there's there's two reds somewhere. We're only going to send down two people to go to go and field it. We're not going to send down eight unless we're on a PK run already. Because if we're on a PK run, you're running into four PKs. That's that's unavoidable. Like it's no big deal, but to field something, we like to send even numbers because it will make us better players overall. Yeah. I mean, it's a little more fun when it's challenging too, a little more rewarding when you win, but there, there is always that, uh, call, I guess to bring one or two more guys. And, uh, but I don't know. It's a, it's an open world sandbox game. So I, that is what it is. The N plus one thing is a real thing. Yeah, the the plus one isn't too bad. I mean, you also get a lot of people that are going to cry wolf, and it, and I just tell them I'm just like I'm streaming. You can go look at it. Like you can go check the footage and go count for yourself. Like it's kind of it's <laughs> yeah, kind of funny, but true. no big deal. Yeah, I I've seen that too, where someone says something, and you're like, okay, well we got it. we actually have it recorded, and you know it was two and this, and you know that's not what happened. You're just remembering it wrong. Another question I had too is. You played a couple other games. I mean, I played almost every PvP sandbox there is. But what is it about UO that makes this play style uh, more fun to you? I guess is it just the the tools you have in your arsenal to kind of to do these things? Uh, it's it's not necessarily that. It's just purely because you can grief and get away with it, or there's like the criminality status. I just like it because the mechanics are so basic that you're never going to run into two people that are the same because you build up your skills and you can do a whole variety of things. You don't have to stick to one build. Like you can do a completely different build from everybody else and make it really strong and powerful. And I, I like, I like the fact that whenever you die, it means something. Whereas in other MMOs, like for the most part, if you die, it's meaningless no big deal. You go res and you go do the same thing over again. And you, whoa, 
you die, you lost your crap, oh well, but you can go kill someone and get even better stuff or something like that. Like I, I like having that open world feeling to where you can walk up to anybody and do anything to them and you don't have many limitations inside the actual game. Is that part of why, why you do this? I, I mean, and a lot of people that play this game, I think, they, they see what you do and they just get really, really angry. And I don't think, uh, if you watch your stream, you can tell, like you're just having an immense amount of fun, uh, and the game allows for it. So I, I don't know why they get so angry when all those mechanics are there. Like the way you deal with it is, is you, you kill chief swirling air, you know, that's, that's how you deal with it. Uh, but at the same time, people just, they get so, so angry. But I guess my, my question is though, is, is that why you do this? It's, it's just, it's more fun to you than, than playing a different way. Well, I mean, it, it, it's fun because you have to think about it this way. The, the more people that are getting frustrated, the more people you're going to have to PVP. Like most people will just sit there. They really don't know what to do in a PVP situation. And it's not only a way for me to have fun. It's a way for them to learn how to deal with future situations. Cause like you, I'm sure you've read about all the shrines and how reds are coming in and just wiping out everybody. And there's only like three or four reds and there's 18 blues standing around them, not knowing what to do. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a good way to get the PVP started at an earlier, at like a, at a quicker rate, at a quicker pace. Cause there's, there's many people that aren't used to this PVP situation. So they, it, it's a good way to adapt because even if you send three people onto me, I'm still going to try and fight you. I'm not just going to go run and hop a gate or run out the dungeon unless there's like four to five people chasing me, like something that's too overwhelming for myself to handle. Yeah. You're, you're dealing mostly with PVM builds, which I know aren't, aren't the best in PVP, but a lot of them are glass cannon ish. So you get, you get three of them on here. It's, it's a lot of damage coming in, even though they're built purely of PVM, but you might be dealing with issues too, where they're not, they're not coordinating. Cause you know, one guy is in a different guild or these two guys aren't at comms. Whereas you know what the hell you're doing and they don't, but that's not always true either. Cause sometimes a lot, lots of these players here, they have, they're on their blue farming, but they, they have a legit red somewhere else, you know, like they know, they know how to play the game. So do you ever get in situations too, where the scrap just gets way out of control and you're, you're in over your head? Yeah, I, I do. And I, I usually, at that point, that's whenever I attempt to play a little bit more lucratively. And I'll, I'll, use, I'll use the map and the mobs to my advantage and use choke points to my advantage. Or in, uh, in some cases, like I also run, I run a thief too. So depending on like who I'm on, it's going to change the situation. I also have, I have a red summoner right now that I farm with and I, I get into fights all the time and he's like, I, I don't go out of my way to go take counts. But if somebody starts to fight me, like their chances of survival are pretty low against that PBM build because he's also a glass cannon. Yeah. So you you run a thief too. Is there anything uh, anything unique about playing this like like playing this style with a thief? Obviously, you steal the thing. And you got you got to run away. Are you doing that in a town? Are you doing it around moon gates? All of the above dungeons. Uh, whenever I do thief, it's 99% in a dungeon just because of the fact that you can run by, take like take someone's skill scroll on the on the run, and whenever they go to attack you, if they're if they're using a two-handed weapon, if they drop it, you can just snag it right out of their backpack. So like things like that. There's a there's a lot more that you can do with the thief, and there's a lot more ways to neutralize your enemy to either make the fight on your side or to make them disengage completely. Yeah, you're kind. Of, you're kind of making a PVP thief, basically, not just uh, not just what the two or three skills you need to actually get the job done. Yeah, no, we don't. We don't play bank thieves. All our builds are combat builds. So, like, I'm sure that you've seen Milk Stream or you've heard people talk about it. He he was the original combat thief, and the difference between the combat thief and the bank thief is the bank thief has zero has zero risk, hundred percent reward. The combat thief has it has a 50 50 so like you have a lot of reward to get from killing them and there's a lot of risk associated with it uh i know disarm has what a 30 second cooldown it, do you guys usually run with with disarm or is it not worth it do you find most people like re-equip their weapon uh with the with the disarm 
you you have that duration where you can't equip a weapon, and you also have that duration where you can't steal it, since it's still technically considered theirs. So the the thing with that is you want to use that to your advantage, because you have to think about it. Most Dexters don't have wrestling, so if you disarm them, that's a way to neutralize them. And then if you manage to get their weapon before they can equip it, then you're at an even bigger advantage than you were. Yeah, I I have a hard time imagine dealing with uh, all the chaos of PvP and then also trying to to steal at the same time. I don't think I could ever do it. But uh yeah, you you guys are obviously pretty pretty damn good at it. Yeah, it's a it's a big learning curve, but it's a it's a fun one cuz I even struggle with the build. I'm not I'm not the best at it at, in any sort of the means, but it is it is much more fun to play than just playing a parry dexter and just running up and smashing someone's pets. Have you made any kind of crazy enemies in this game? Doing all this, people that just, they see you doing your thing and they just come swar- like swooping in, trying to trying to kill you and make you pay, I guess. I mean, I could I could say that about anybody who, who sent someone down just because they see the name, but I mean, if I, if I had to pick someone, it'd definitely be the cowboys of the server. They know who they are. So... Yeah, you see some cowboy chicken donuts running around. I mean, and most of Shard knows about about them. Cowboy? Ch- no, I, I don't. What, what are you talking about? Uh, it's a it's a lost in translation thing that comes from the RAQ members. We we like PVPing with them because they're pretty good PVPers. It's it's fun to play against them. You know, they they get frustrated. We get frustrated. Have a back and forth. It's pretty fun. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I imagine doing this, you form all sorts of of odd relationships, people that maybe respect you, people that like what you do and people that just, uh, really, really hate, hate the crap you pull off. Yeah. I mean, everyone's going to get frustrated with how I play. It, it just comes, it comes with the name, comes with the grief. So it, like, if you don't like it, you got to remember it's, it's the game. Like the mechanics are in there. You don't have to overall overwhelm a situation just to win. Like you can, you can play it evenly and better yourself or you can just all out mob one dude and feel good whenever you get your stuff back like whatever makes them happy when you say griefer people imagine newbie killing any like stuff that pushes people off of a shard or off of a server L- level you go through level one dungeon clear it out of people even though you know people in level one aren't aren't maxed out characters so you're obviously killing newer guys do you do stuff like that too is that all part of the fun or or do you usually like pick pick your targets more uh more more carefully well uh, those are the kind of griefers that i don't like like i i don't like that because as you mentioned as you mentioned it's going to kick those new players off the shard like if i'm if i'm running around gray and if they're attacking me like with other like two other people that were already attacking me yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put them down, but if I see them around, like I'll give them their stuff back, I'll res them, etc. cuz I mean, it is it is annoying and it does it really does ruin the game for the newer players, but I mostly go in and I grief on like level 3 or people who I've seen on the shard for a long time just because I know that they have they have like some some combat under their belt, so they got some experience. But there's no reason for me to be on level 1. Like what are they going to have like eight gold coins it's it's not what i'm looking for i'm looking for the rare loot i'm looking for a lot of gold looking for people with a lot of fame because the more fame uh the the more experience that they've had so it's really pointless to go kill a bunch of newbies in level one or two because you can easily point them out like it's not that hard you can see somebody with 70 skills struggling struggling to kill a ghoul and you could see someone walk up and one shot a lich so it's sort of that deal yeah, so you're you are selectively picking your targets, uh, which I guess does separate you a little bit from from the chaff. Although it doesn't make people less mad when they run up to you, though. No, it's just most of those people are they're already like within a guild, so they have their people that can go field and deal with me. So it it's sort of that sort of thing. Where as a new player, they don't really know what's going on. The older players, yeah, they're going to get frustrated, they're going to get pissy, and that sort of thing. But they they don't have to attack me like they're just not going to get their gold so like it it's sort of it's sort of like a 50-50 almost at that point cuz you're taking the risk by attacking me what like 
rather than just leaving me alone and letting me do my thing. Because the people who don't attack me and that just say that they're never going to do it, obviously I have no point in just messing with them because it becomes boring to me, whereas I'm looking to go fight many people at the same time. Yeah, well, the way to deal with you is is not attack, not fall for the traps, not get angry, and, and move. You know, change dungeons, do something else, I guess. Exactly. Change, like change the, the easiest thing to do is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Easier said than done when you're when you're being your annoying self running around trying to get them to <laughs> attack you. Oh yeah, they're, it's no doubt annoying cuz like there there's griefers everywhere. Like I get grief sometimes and I I just deal with them because well mostly cuz I do have a lot of PVP experience that it's not too big of an issue for me. So for other players it can be a big issue to them because they do these glass cannon builds where I like my survivability builds that also function in PvP situations but are very strong in PvM situations. So let's let's move on to SUP. Uh, we talked about them briefly and we've gone over your play style, but I, I don't think like your play style is necessarily what, what SUP is all about either. So like who is SUP? What are you guys doing on the server? Like what's your what's your goals? What do you guys like? Well, SUP is, it stands for Seriously new, Unique Players because that's what we are. Like, we we want to deviate ourselves from the normal player. We like having our our different builds. Our, like, we, we mess around with builds all the time. And we want to keep the shard healthy. So we don't want to be a Zerg. We don't want to send eight PKs to go PK through a dungeon. We'll send, like, three like we we if we see a field fight we're not going to send eight people to go kill two we're going to send two down we're going to leave all the all, like all the newbies alone because it's not worth it for us and it's also makes the game a pain in the butt for them so we kind of want to we want to have like a higher upstanding guild and not necessarily one that somebody sees and rolls their eyes cuz they're known to be they're known to be like the jackasses of the server we don't we don't want to be like that are you all are y'all finding some some uh, success on the server? How big have y'all gotten? Are you participating in factions? Are you doing Corpse Creek? Are you just sweeping through dungeons? Are you uh, picking fights with any guilds out there? Uh, we we do a lot of factions. We'll do the Corpse Creek, like if we have the numbers, because Corpse Creek kind of turns into a Zerg fest for the most part. So whenever we do have the numbers on, like we're we're a smaller guild, like we. Like, you'll rarely ever find us with eight people on at the same time. Like, we started off with four core players, and we would only have four people for more than half the life of the shard. So that would that would be, like, a rarity to see four of us on at the same time because we have some EU players. Uh, we have a player out in Argentina. We, like, we are in different time zones in the U.S. as well. So coordinating is, is definitely sometimes a problem for us because we don't have the numbers on at all times. So we 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 sort of just play like casually but competitively, right? Yeah, so a smaller core group of players that that get along and, and know what the hell you're doing, and find success there either solo, duo, trio, whatever. And then when you have the numbers, take on on bigger, better content. Yeah, like we like we'll do bosses too. Uh, I I would say that we roughly have about ten active members. So it's it's not it's not big. It's nowhere near like the people who have like thirty plus people playing. Yeah, well, you can do a lot with ten, especially if those ten are are dedicated and and logging in. You get a, you get a lot of stuff moving and shaking with with that number of people on you. It seems like. Yeah, that. But again, it's kind of just like an if because I know me and uh me and BXB Milk are in school, so we're we don't always have have the time set aside, and most of us are are in our older older years of life so they got work and everything so we sort of just like play casually and like to like to have fun and go out pvp and like take our breaks go do whatever do you guys uh, recruit at all do you want do you want to throw that out there or, or is it more of a, a selection thing like you have to go approach someone uh we we don't actively recruit um we don't really have our doors open a lot of the people that are in the guild are people who we played with before but um, I mean we're we're always we're always open to hear who wants to join. So it is kind of like a selection process, and we, you know, we bring it up, we act as a group, we bring it to the discussion, etc. So 
I wouldn't necessarily say that we 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 have any sort of means to be a very big guild. Like we're fine with the numbers that we have currently because we don't see that we need more. Because the more you have, the more zergy the guild gets, and we want to avoid that as much as possible. We'd rather have quality over quantity. Yeah, you can't take the fights that you like to live in when you get that big. You end up you end up turning into something different, and then it's then the game's not fun for you because you're not playing how you like to play. Yeah, uh, like I totally agree with that. Like, if you're not if you're not having fun, and if you're kind of taking the fun out of the game, then there's kind of no point to play. It will it will make it boring. It will start to kill off the shard because if you just become a dominant guild, much less people are going to want to play because they're just getting completely steamrolled. Yeah, the only counter argument I have to that is, while those are all valid valid things to to believe and and can make your play your playing your play style fun is sometimes you lock yourself out of content whereas you're not able to, to participate in some of the stuff in the game. It seems less of an issue with you, especially with what Owen and, and Luthus are doing, uh, even forthcoming here with the chain stuff and the way, the way they're handling bosses and being able to summon them. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the really big content, I guess the only thing I can think of here that we have is maybe maybe the really high-end bosses that get we get multiple kids, guilds fighting over them or, or stuff like Corpse Creek. Whereas when you, when you stay small, you have a hard time going against the bigger guys that are that are in there controlling it. Well, we don't we don't have too much of a problem actually doing that. Like we we raid a lot of bosses. Like last night we raided, uh, I believe it was Wreck doing a boss. We had three people versus their like nine, and we were able to clear them and get some of the loot out. So like it's not it's not necessarily having the numbers. Like yeah, you might need numbers to do a boss, but we can we can do bosses pretty quick if we got four to five guys on. Like it's not too difficult, and with the changes, it is going to make it a lot easier for the smaller guilds to be able to participate. But we also don't have people that just sit in the dungeons or go through and look for the bosses actively, like every hour on the dot or like every thirty minutes. So that's where it's a disadvantage. You're getting the content, just not not one hundred percent of the time as you wish. It's going to be you're going to pick and choose your fights, I guess, and still get that content, which is I mean, it's cool that that Outlands is allowing that too. You have some games where it's just impossible to function as a small unit. Yeah, th- this is definitely more open to being able to run around in small groups and still accomplish an overall goal. So, like, if we if we notice someone doing a boss, yeah, we're going to go mess with them. And then if we clear them out, we might be able to take it with our PVMers or something like that, something along those lines. Yeah, we're just coming right at the end. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we we have done a couple of thief runs right at the end. <laughs> that that works. That's a that's a good secondary. Yeah, there's a there's a change on the test scenario that's coming, I guess, pretty soon to where the the boss loot, the shrine loot, all that has a a timer, so you can't just come in and dry loot it all at once. Uh, I docs, I think too. Yeah, I saw that. That's a that's actually it's a really good change in my opinion, just because it it is annoying because you can script all that. It's technically not allowed, but people do it still. I mean, whenever I go to a boss loot, I usually go to manually loot first because people are typically flipping through the grid looter pages, whereas I can just sneak in with the mouse and grab the most expensive thing and run out. I, I guess if you're picking and choosing your loot, that's for sure faster. Uh, I don't. All those small pixels are are rough on me trying to trying to go in and click them out. Although since I moved to Classic UO, I've gotten. I've gotten used to looting that way, but I'll be really appreciative when that client finally gets some kind of grid loot mechanic, even if it is slow. It, when you're out PVMing, you know, two or three hours, and you got to drag all that shit off those really tiny pixels, tiny boxes. I don't know. The game was made in 99. Sometimes it didn't play that well in 2019. Yeah, I I do see that. I mean, I know that the classic client has a lot of problems right now. I've heard it's like crashing and it's not perfect, but it's getting closer and closer to what people would like to see. Yeah, it'll get there. I mean, for now, I guess people people do have the Steam grid loot. And uh, you're definitely going to be faster if you're picking and choosing what you take. Uh, but I, I don't know. Whenever I'm in Steam, I'm definitely clicking each little box going down. So if you were to come up to me, you would just take all the good shit i'd be i'd be stuck in the wild <laughs> yeah the only the only downfall to that is that it does have the the object delay so if you click too fast you're going to miss a lot yeah i've done that too you start clicking clicking 
and then leaving stuff on the corpse. But we got a couple of community questions here. Let's see, a couple from Shadowstone. You, you did a fundraising on one of your streams. How did that go? Do you have any plans to do more and, and or any, any any thoughts on that you want to share with us? Well, I mean, I, I did it for I did it for St. Baldrick's, which was a cause that I worked with before. And I think I raised like 150 bucks. Uh, the goal was 500. I mean, no big deal if I don't reach it, but all the money's going to them. I'm just going to transfer it out of the account. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more by the end of the month because I increased the duration of it. Um, because Twitch has you, like there's that limit, like you have to have $100 in to take it out. So I want to see how big I can get it and then take it out and uh, go ahead and send that over to St. Baldrick's. But I mean, I would say it's going pretty well considering that I haven't streamed too much lately. Um, but I'm always open to ideas on how to like improve it, etc. So if anybody has any ideas or different causes that they like, they can always message it over to me because I don't mind donating to them. I'm making donations off Twitch. It's no big deal to me. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool, especially uh, coming with your play style and and Twitch. It's cool to see something like that and uh, how you're doing for the community and and those in need too. You would expect worse. See, you're not a bad guy. You're a nice guy. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to have fun, make sure everybody's having a good time. I mean, if you get frustrated, we all get frustrated. It's no big deal. You just got to turn that front upside down sometimes. I'm going to really need you to be a basement dwelling neckbeard, you know, frothing at the mouth, crazy. I, I don't know. You like that? <laughs> I need you to no, kill puppies. No, that is not me. Kill puppies <laughs> in your downtime. How many squirrels did you kill as a child? <laughs> Boofed your at mom. least uh, 36. <laughs> Yeah, that's you, you hear that, I'm sure. Uh let's see. Any any uh any more ideas for, for Outlands, uh what they can do to get a, a healthy PvP scene here. Um, I know that they've they have a lot of red penalties. It doesn't seem like there's many reds that are running around other than the typical ones that you see. They also need good gold sinks because how you get reds to be out there to get more field pvp is to have people that have a lot of gold and that are farming constantly so there's not as many farmers compared to there used to be so they need to have more ideas where people are more engaged to sink their gold into than pks will come out of hiding in their houses to go kill those people to try and get their gold and the pks that are running out will cause more like blues to go in there and kill them etc yeah, do you have any ideas for a good gold sink? I I know one one that's come up in the past was the uh, the soul stone mechanic where you can you can take some skills and save them, which they're bringing to the shard with with echo with the ecosystem. But even that is it's going to come with uh, you can use gold, you can use um, aspect gear. It, this all may change, but by the time it comes out, but they definitely need a couple more gold sinks. I'm just not sure where they're gonna where they're gonna pull that stuff from. I mean, they, they could always add, because you know how they do the faction points and you have like all your customizations from like the societies and things like that. So there's a lot of different things that they can take instead of being like, all right, go kill 50, 50 of these monsters to get this. Why not like pay half a mil to get a cool horse or something like that? Like anything additional that they can do to make people go out and farm or even add different rares like you know, have there be like a one one hundredth of a chance to get a rare mount drop from a random mob or something like that like anything to encourage people to go out and farm more and more yeah it sounds like you're you're more interested in the uh, pvp that happens in the wild not not structured timer based type things uh yeah i mean i, I do like the field i like uh i like having the combat experience of running around I'm not necessarily too big of a fan of duels. I, I'm very new to dueling. I, I like it, but it's not my forte because there's no risk whenever you do it. Like you still just get your crap back and you can go do it all over again. It's good practice, in my opinion, but it's not the form of PvP that I would like. Like I still like the faction struggles and everything. I think it's a very good a good way for people to get into the PvP scene. And I like the Corpse Creek because at that point it takes the the hardened vets that are pretty good at PVP and puts them to the test and you get a decent reward out of it. But I do think that they have to increase the amount for like increase either the duration of the like special loot chance or 
increased grafting, whatever it is, they need to up the percent chance that it happens. So like instead of 15% special loot, you get that every week, make it 20%, 25%, something a little bit more to encourage more players to take part in Corpse Creek contest. Oh yeah, that's that's good feedback. Uh, probably something they may consider. I, I know they have a couple of things in the works. We're we're dealing right now with their PVM patch, which does have some PVP changes, but they're falling on the heels of this is going to be a a, a massive PVP uh, boon to the shard. And we don't know all of what that entails just yet, so I'll be curious to see what they what they do with it. And it's probably at least right in my next question, and uh, which is from Shadowstone. Also, what's your long-term view on the shard you know where do you see sup going where do you see yourself doing what do you, where do you want to see the shard go i mean definitely the the shard from from day one like with their ideas that they're that they've been coming up with i think it's going to have longevity in comparison to most of them like it already has one of the largest player bases for an ultima online shard so they're definitely doing things good they take a lot of community feedback and like I've spoken to the devs, like they take a lot of the feedback that I give them and they'll make those changes. Like you don't necessarily have to bug the crap out of them to make it happen. You know, if you just see something, report it. They they have plenty of issues that are going on. It's not perfect. It's not, it's never going to be pitch perfect. Like it's hard to get to that status. So they do a lot to increase people wanting to keep on joining because there's still new players that are coming about and with new content, We'll bring back old players. We'll bring new, even more new players in because somebody tells their friend, just like, hey, this game's really cool, etc. In terms of SUP, like I, I see us basically growing more and more every day as, as stronger PVPers, and that's that's where I want us to be. I want us to be like a, a good group of uh, PVPers and at the same time being able to go do some end game uh, PVM content and get some cool cosmetics like the boss rares. Yeah, those are all good points and a good good place to uh, try to take yourselves to. Man, it was it was awesome talking to you. I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to add or anything else we didn't bring up? Oh uh, yeah, you know, I, I know that Chill said that uh, he's really good friends with Sup Your Dad. I mean, find that true. I just hope that we could take our relationship to the next step. You know. <laughs> okay, are you uh, are you calling him out or? Uh... Oh no, I'm, I'm being dead serious. Like you know, he's a really cool guy. Like he's awesome. Like I really want to see that relationship grow. <laughs> I'm detecting sarcasm, but if you're if you're saying it at a face value, we'll we'll pass it along to to Jill. It's definitely face value. <laughs> yeah, that was a. Uh, I just interviewed Jill last week, uh, and you'll you'll be on the show after him. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean he's he's a cool guy. He's funny. I like his persona. Yeah, uh, you know, it's another personality in the game that once you actually sit down and talk to him, like. You know, he's just a dude playing a game. Um, you know, it's not, uh, he's not some crazy mortal enemy out there. So that's why I like to get people like him and you on to tell us, tell us your side of the game and, you know, the things you do and things your, your guild's gone through. So not to put you in the same class as, as, uh, as chill necessarily, <laughs> but I think the hate on the shard is of, of a different level for, for chill and LOD than what chief swirling axes. Or two swirling arrows is up to. Yeah, we we like to we like to kill them with positivity nowadays. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thanks, man, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, I think it's a unique play style. It's it's something that uh, Outlands allows and UO has always allowed. So um, I wouldn't necessarily want it to go away. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you're out there doing what you do, so that I you know I can have the fun of trying to take you down. That's uh, without that, that the game wouldn't be the same. It would be just a boring bash in my head against monster game, and uh, that's not what you always, you know. So, thank you, uh, Chief, for for hopping on here, and uh, good luck with your stream, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, they can hit you up at Boofed Your Mom, and uh, or DM you in Discord too. So, go to our website, InsideOutlands.com. We'll have a link to our Discord there. You can hang out there and talk to our guest. Uh, I've, I've had a couple things recently. I've, I've been dropping episodes down early, uh, you know, asking for feedback questions there. So, so hop on the Discord and, and come hang out with us. All right, I'll see you all next week. Thanks. Thanks.